Hey guys, it's Melanie and I appreciate you being here. Thanks for stopping by. Today is part one of my new quilting series. I've got this five part video series. It's going to show you how to make this exact quilt. Well, I'm going to be using different fabric, but it's going to be the exact same pattern. It's going to show you all the steps from start to finish on how to make the quilt. If you don't want to make this exact quilt, don't worry. Each video is going to show you basic quilting skills. So cutting, basting, quilting, binding, the whole thing, you're going to learn a lot of skill building techniques and things for you to use in your next quilt. So I want to say a quick thank you to my sponsors who are helping to make this series possible. They've donated tons of supplies to give away and there's just like tons of stuff that they've sent me for this series. So Arafil Thread, Arafil is an Italian thread company and they are my favorite thread. They make high quality cotton thread. Um, you're going to see me using it in this video series. You guys are going to love them. Also Clover, Clover makes really high quality quilting notions. Every time I buy anything from Clover, I'm always impressed, never disappointed. I love their wonder clips. So thank you to Clover. And also we have My Quilt Box, which is a monthly subscription service. You can do three and six month options as well. So the box was really cool. When I opened it up, there was fabric and rulers and notions. So it, that is a great thing for beginners to get started with some fun surprise options and high quality options in your monthly subscription box. All right, so now we are ready to start with our fabric selection and the cutting instructions. I'm going to be showing you a demonstration here in a minute, but I want to let you know that in the description box, there is tons and tons of tons of information. Um, you are going to really want to know where that is and, and look at that because there's going to be too many numbers and things that I'm flying out um, verbally. So you're really going to want to be able to have that. I'm going to have a downloadable file so that you can print it out, take it with you to the fabric store when you're shopping or when you're shopping online or whatever the case is. I'm going to have like a bajillion links down there. So be sure to find that. Everything will be listed out for you. Now I'm so excited because Free Spirit sent me um, the new Amy Butler line of fabric. I'm a huge Amy Butler fan and I'm going to be using her line of fabric called Bright Heart. Now I'm going to have tons of information down below, but these are kind of like very saturated colors. I'm excited to be using this for coming into the fall season. So I also wanted to mention that Free Spirit was very generous and they sent me enough fabric of all of the stuff I'm going to be using to send to one of you guys. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I will explain how you can win it all. Now for you picking out your fabric, you can use the exact same fabric that I'm going to be using. I will have all of those fabrics listed out in the description box. But also, so this is meant to be very patchworky. This is meant to be something just really fun. You can use different selections of fabric from your stash. You can use fat quarter bundles. I will have the measurements for that below. You can use whatever your favorite fabric selection is. So you're going to have a selection of prints. I'm going to use 11 prints. You can use a little bit less than that if you don't want to use that many, but we do want it to have a very patchworky feel. Then we're also going to need two solids that are going to be in fairly high contrast with some of the fabrics that we have selected for this roundabout shape. I'll insert a picture right here. These flying geese that are kind of circling around in a circle shape, that needs to be something kind of high contrast from your fabrics. So pick something high contrast for that, okay? Can't stress that enough, otherwise it's gonna disappear in your fabrics. The other amazing thing I'm gonna be doing is a wall backing. Now, wall is a woven fabric, it's 100% cotton. It is the same width of fabric as a standard cotton, a uh, standard quilting cotton. It is super soft. It's very kind of sheer material but it's still a very high thread count so it's very durable. You can machine quilt on it. I put it on the back of my daughter's quilt and I love it. I like literally love the result. I'm probably going to try to do voile backings on all of my next quilts because it just feels so luxurious that way. So I'm going to be using voile but you don't have to use wool. It's a little bit more expensive than regular 100% quilting cotton. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, again, everything will be listed below and kind of like the ways that you can modify it and the options. Okay, now to pre-wash or to not pre-wash. Now, there are some different opinions in this camp. I am a non-pre-washer when you are using high quality cottons uh, that you have bought from a reputable company. I have never had a problem with any amount of bleeding, so it's up to you. If you would like to pre-wash your fabric, feel free to do so. You will need to wash and dry them, tumble dry low, and then you'll need to iron everything before you cut. So um, if you normally pre-wash, go ahead and do that. I am not a pre-washer, so if you don't want to pre-wash, have no fear. Just make sure you're using a high quality cotton. 
And if you were going to be using like a red and a white, I would maybe pre-wash those because they're such high contrast and they're, you know, that red can be a little tricky sometimes. So if you are going to be doing something like that, then I would recommend to pre-wash those types of fabrics. You can also use the color catchers. I'll put a link below. I've never actually used one, but I've heard tons of quilters who swear by that. So you can check that out if you're nervous about that part. Now you'll also notice that in my yardage that I have calculated, I have some diagrams on how you can cut the yardage. There is so much information, it's kind of crazy, and don't feel overwhelmed. If you have any questions, leave me comments. I'm gonna be really focused on this quilting series for the month of August, so I will be able to respond to you if you have any questions. But I did pad the measurements that I gave you for the cutting. I, I'm sort of assuming that maybe I have some beginners here who have never cut fabric from yardage before, who are new to quilting, and I wanted to make sure that I gave you enough fabric that if you made some mistakes or if things didn't go quite right or when you got your fabric in the mail, it wasn't quite 18 inches, which is that half yard width. Any of those kind of little things, if any of those happen, I wanted to make sure that you have enough fabric. Not to mention, if you're using a fabric that you love, you're gonna have some leftovers and you're gonna be able to use it afterwards anyway. Just be aware that I did pad my fabric requirements. All right, now that we've gotten through all of those things, let's get started and I'm gonna to demonstrate to you how you're gonna be cutting one of your half yard cuts. I'm gonna go over the basics of cutting, give you everything that you need to know, so let's get going. Okay, now here is what you need for your cutting basics. You need a rotary mat. I have two sizes here. I'm gonna be using the green one because it's larger, but this is a good size as well. You want a rotary cutter. Put a fresh blade in there when you're starting a new project. And this is my favorite ruler that I use all the time. It's a six by 24 inch ruler. So these are the basics that you need. There's other things that you can get into as you get more comfortable, but these are the basics that you need to get started. Now we're gonna be cutting a lot of half yards of fabric for this project. So here is a half yard of fabric. The 44 inch, which is the width of fabric, if you see on patterns W-O-F, that means width of fabric. And this is about 18 inches, which is a half yard cut. Now I will have this diagram as well. I'm gonna darken up these lines and scan this for you. This is a diagram showing the best way to get the most out of your half yard cut of fabric. So I will have this for you. Basically, we're going to get 24 four and a half inch squares and then three five inch squares from this cut of fabric. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure you have a straight edge to work with. The way that we know we have a straight edge to work with is that this corner down here is a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to show you um, exactly what you need to do. Okay, now here is our corner. We are going to take our ruler and we're going to line it up. Now I will get some close ups, so don't worry. But what we want to do is you want to use these lines on your ruler and make sure that it's going across the entire length right here, okay? Because then when you line it up that way, you know that this is going to be a 90 degree angle. So let's line it up and you can see up at the top, it's not quite square. So we're going to need to come in a little bit so that we make sure that it's square all the way going up. What you wanna do is open your rotary cutter. Be really careful with these, make sure you close them after each time you cut. Okay, we're gonna start, make sure that everything is lined up. You can, you know, measure twice, cut once. That is always a good rule. So we're gonna use our hand to stabilize the ruler and then we are going to cut our fabric. I'm going to show you once more so that you can see it zoomed out exactly how it looks. So we are going to do line up this line going all the way across to make sure that we get a 90 degree angle here. Okay, line this up. Open your rotary cutter using your left hand to stabilize your ruler. And this is why you want to have a good blade because that will make this process a lot easier. Okay, now that we are sure that this is a straight line on this side, we are actually going to 
flip it over. Now, all of my cutting instructions are gonna be for people who are right-handed. So I apologize if you're left-handed. You're gonna to wanna to reverse everything that I'm doing if you're left-handed. Okay, so now we know this is our straight side. And when you lay your ruler on here, we're gonna, sh we're gonna know exactly how wide we need to cut, and then we'll cut along this side. So what we wanna do is we're gonna be cutting four and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna look at my diagram. I need to have two strips of four and a half inches in order for me to subcut that down into four and a half inch squares. So don't get too far ahead of yourself. Just the first step is we need a four and a half inch strip. So let's zoom in a little bit here so that we can see. So we need four and a half inches because our patchwork squares are gonna finish at four inches. So we need to allow for the seam allowance. Now we want four and a half inches, so it's gonna be one, two, three, four and a half inches. So we are gonna line up the four and a half inch mark along with our edge of fabric here. Now, a tip with rulers is you wanna always include the line when you're doing your cutting. Okay, so you can see how the line, here's the line and I'm gonna include that line. I'm gonna include that in the cut. I'm not gonna leave it on the outside of that cut, okay? So include the line. Make sure you have your 90 degree angle. If you don't have a 90 degree angle, something went wonky and you need to recut your straight edge. Okay, so one, two, three, four and a half. And we have our four and a half inch line going all the way up, okay? So a little bit closer here. I'm just going through real slow so you can see. Okay, here's that line. We get our 90 degree angle. And here is the mark here. So you can see, we don't want the line to be on the outside of the cut. We want it to be included in our cut. Now I'm confident that everything is straight. We're gonna do the same thing. Open up your rotary blade using your left hand to stabilize your ruler. We're going to cut. Ooh, look, there it is our strip. Okay, so leave this just like it is. Leave that just as it is and set it aside. According to our diagram, we need another four and a half inch strip. So we're going to do the same thing again. Okay, now like I mentioned before, I did pad the fabric requirements for this project in order to allow for any mistakes. So if you make a mistake, don't freak out, it'll be fine. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we're gonna move this to the side for just a minute and we're gonna work with these guys. So keeping them nice and together, let's stack them on top of each other. You don't have to stack them on top of each other if you don't feel comfortable but this way it will make our cutting go a little bit quicker. Now they are stacked, so we're gonna be doing a couple cuts at a time. Now we need to sub cut these down to four and a half inches, but first let's cut these selvage edges off. This up. Cut those selvage edges off. Now we gotta carefully flip these over. We carefully flipped it over. Now we need to subcut four and a half inches. Okay, so we find our one, two, three, four and a half inch mark that we were using before. Include that line. Make sure it is a 90 degree angle. So now see, we've gotten four cuts at one time and finish going down. Make sure you double check yourself. One, two, three, four and a half. But again, if you make a mistake, don't freak out. It will be fine. If you notice that you're getting a little off square, just really try to pay attention to that 90 degree angle. Okay, so now we've got these bits that are folded. So we need to open them up and cut these individually because they have this fold on here. So it'll be a little bit easier to cut that individually.
and these can just go in your scrap pile. Okay, so now we have our remaining fabric to cut. Now, if you follow along on the diagram, you will notice up here we have our four and a half inches, and then down here we have our five inch um, pieces. So what we need to do is open it up and go from here. So let's cut our salvage off. And then we will flip the fabric. So we need three five inch pieces. So five times three is 15. So we're gonna cut 15 inches. So what I'm gonna do is line my edge up here to the 10 mark on my mat, or the one mark is fine, just something where you know where the 15 mark is. Okay, make sure everything is nice and straight. We're gonna come up here to the 25 mark because it's 15 inches that we need. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up with the mark here and with the 25, and we can use the lines on our mat Generally, you want to use the ruler lines, but in this kind of scenario, when you really need to use the mat, that's fine too. It's usually better to go with your ruler lines rather than your mat lines. We've got this fabric. It's, I know that it's got straight lines on both sides. So what I'm going to do is cut three five inch sections. Five inch pieces that we are cutting are for our half square triangles. So in case you're wondering why we're cutting different sizes, it's because for our half square triangles. Okay, then we're going to cut then we're going to cut a five inch square from this piece. Now, if you got a true half, if you got a true half yard of fabric, you probably won't have enough on this piece to make another five inch square. My cuts were very generous, so I actually have enough to make two. But that's why I modified, um, you know, the measurements. Because if you have just strictly 18 inches, you won't have enough for a five inch square for the second part. If your fabric is very wrinkled, you might want to give it a press before cutting. It can sometimes make it easier, although a lot of times when you're pressing it down with the ruler like this, it won't. So see, on this side, I didn't have quite enough for a 5-inch uh, square, so no big deal. We'll just put this in our scrap pile. I'm going to take this remaining cut fold it in half, make sure everything's lined up. It was already cut straight before, so you shouldn't have any problems. And what we're gonna do is cut two four and a half inch strips. Okay, leave that just like it is, because we're gonna do the same thing where we stack it. Cut the salvage off. Always double check yourself. I've made dozens of quilts and I still occasionally make mistakes. So just double, always double check yourself. There's no shame in that. So from the half yard of fabric, you should have gotten 30 four and a half inch squares and three five inch squares. That's gonna be depending on how your fabric was cut. If you had a generous half yard cut or not, you should at least have three. I got four and then I had two that weren't quite large enough. Now we're gonna finish the cutting with all of the prints. All of the cutting instructions will be under the video in the description box below, but that is basically how you're going to be cutting the patchwork squares from this yardage. I will also have details on fat quarters in the description box below, but this is the basics on how you do it in order to cut accurate squares in order for you to then your project will be easier when your things are cut accurately uh, moving forward. So be sure to check that out. 
and I'll be back to show you what it looks like all cut up. So the biggest number to remember is that we need 352 total squares, 280 of the four and a half inch squares in various prints. We're gonna need three quarters of a yard of binding fabric. We're gonna cut it later, so you can just set that aside for now. And then we're gonna need four and a half yards of your backing fabric. I'm using wool, you can use cotton, so set that aside for now. You need coordinating thread. The other notions that you might need are these Clover Wonder Clips. You also need a nice set of pins. Good pins are really helpful and also a water soluble pen. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if that was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any other questions. Leave those in the comment section below. You can also send me a message on Facebook to my Facebook like fan page, my like page. I'll have a link there for that. Um, that's a good way to get a hold of me if you are trying to get the answer to something. Also, you can leave me a comment on my blog or send me an email. There are lots of ways to get in touch with me if you're having trouble, so please do that. I wanna be here for you guys. I wanna help you through this process. Also, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. That really helps to support this channel and then you won't miss a video when I have a new video that comes out. All right, now who wants to win all this fabric? I, I bet all of you, right? <laughs> because Amy Butler is amazing. You're gonna love this fabric. It's gorgeous in person. This video doesn't even do it justice. Um, so if you wanna win this bundle of fabric, I will have the terms and conditions linked underneath the video. So be sure to check those out. I wanna make sure that I'm doing everything following the rules with YouTube rules of giveaways. So be sure to check those terms and conditions. So in order to enter to win this bundle, I want you to leave me a comment underneath this video. And I want you to tell me what you love about quilting or what you hope to love about quilting. If you're just learning, you haven't started quilting yet, what you're excited to learn about or what you love about quilting. Quilting is my favorite, favorite, favorite of all the crafts that I do. So I love quilting and I want to really share that love with you guys. So leave me a comment explaining what your favorite part of quilting is and I will pick one lucky winner to send this bundle to. We're gonna do that in about a week's time. That way you can get your bundle in time to start making your own quilts if you wanna follow along with this project. Okay, I think that's it. Wow, this video was jam packed with information. I hope that you find tons of value in this quilting series. Thank you again to my sponsors, Arafil, Clover, and my quilt box for helping to make this series possible. I will see you in video two. Bye.